Union, the United Auto Workers Union, putting more pressure on the big three U.S. car makers, GM, Ford, and Stellantis. It plans to expand its strikes if there is no progress in contract talks by a Friday deadline. Bloomberg Sue Keenan joins us now with more on this. And Sue, what is the union strategy here? Well, at this point, uh, a source close to the union says the strategy is to remain as flexible as possible and really take their cues from what's going on at the bargaining table. Now, this has been an different strike from all those in the past. It's called a stand-up strike in that the union is expanding its uh, strike actions as the action goes on, and they're trying to keep the automakers guessing. So a source tells us at this point that they do not uh, have any talk scheduled immediately with Ford or Stellantis. They were planning late Wednesday uh, today in the U.S. to meet with GM, and they're planning to escalate their strike action as of Friday noon if they do not see major progress. Uh, again, thousands of auto workers began the strike on, you know, September 14th, and then last Friday, the union expanded the labor action to 38 GM and Stellantis distribution centers. Ford was spared because it had made concessions. This time, a source tells Bloomberg Ford may not be spared, and that, quote, everything is on the table. Again, the strategy is very different in that they're gradually ratcheting up the pressure on all three automakers. Their demands, according to the automakers, are very difficult to meet. The automakers have offered about a 20% wage increase. The UAW is seeking double that. The union also saying they're expected to release a video highlighting violence that some strikers have experienced on the picket line on Tuesday uh, afternoon in Flint, Michigan. Someone trying to exit the GM service and parts plan was blocked by picketers. And according to police, uh, that person then drove right through the picket line, striking five individuals. One of them was taken taken to a hospital. So again, they want to ensure the safety of their workers as well. Meanwhile, Sue, we're learning that the union's push for a return to pension plans. I should say that's a key sticking point. Yeah, it is for almost any company. And we do know that the three automakers have uh, been happy to leave these pension plans in the past. Uh, they were a sacred benefit for the automakers. Uh, those hired prior to 2008, the financial crisis, were given these pensions where even after they retired, they would still uh, get paid. Uh, since 2008, those brought on have had 401k plans instead. You're looking at Biden, President Biden, who uh, greeted and walked with the picketers on Tuesday, uh, stopping short of supporting all of the UAW's demands, uh, but supporting that they should be paid more. Uh, the union really demanding uh, the pensions as part of the package. We know that analysts with Bloomberg Intelligence find that if GM were to agree to the UAW proposal to, you know, reinstate these benefit pension plans for hourly employees, its pension liability could reach $129 billion. So all proposals remain on the table, but such a move would certainly shift the pension burden back to the company. And we're also seeing this kind of demand for a pension plan resonate uh, outside of the auto industry. Uh, there is clearly concern uh, by the UAW union members about retirement and security in retirement in this highly inflationary environment and we're also hearing there are requests being made outside the uh, auto industry for this kind of security which is a reflection of the insecurity if you will in the current environment where prices are just going higher and higher here in the U.S.